Warning! This video contains spoilers that reveal critical parts of the game's storyline. If you don't want to see these, stop watching now. Hello again my friends, Eric Pearson here, hope you're all doing well, and welcome back to my ongoing coverage of Game Dev Tycoon. I admit that the last episode ran a bit long as I was making one mistake after another, but I'm happy to report that our last game sold very well, in fact well enough to upgrade our studio. So let's get into it. Alright, so... European Games, the newest game by Tangent Systems, has caused a storm of good reviews and excited customers. Industry professionals say that European Games is one of these rare games that will set a new quality standard for future games. Okay, that's good to know. And we've got a million and a half dollars in the bank. And European Games seems to be selling well so far. Alright, so... And it says here that Tangent Systems has... Really made gaming history with European games. Well done. Well, that's great. All right. Now, one thing is we now have the ability to hire people. So we're going to do that. We're going to add someone. Okay, hold on. It says you have to complete staff management training before you can hire someone. Okay. Well, I better do that. All right. So training on staff management. Yeah, now is where things get a little more serious, because we're no longer just one guy in a garage. We've got a fully-fledged office, and we're going to be managing staff. Alright, so basic training is done. And it's time to fill the position. Okay, so we need to set a budget. Let's say... Let's set a budget of about 70000 And how do we pre-filter applicants? We can do complex algorithms, a game demo, or a showreel. Well, let's go for game demo. Now, before I pull the trigger here, here's a curious story. Years ago, John Romero of id Software left the company and decided to strike out on his own. And so he formed a new company called Ion Storm. And when he founded this company, he stepped out in a big way. He leased the top two penthouse levels of a, a very tall office building in Texas. And what's interesting is one of the people he hired was someone who just graduated from high school who'd built a name for himself designing his own levels for Doom, one of John Romero's own games. So John hired this kid straight out of high school, offered him $40,000 a year salary. Keep in mind, this was in the maybe late 90s, early 2000s. $40,000 a year right out of high school. That was very good money. And from what I read... This kid planned to bank the money, get some good, valuable work experience, and eventually use the money to self-fund his college education. Now imagine that. Imagine getting valuable work experience and afterward being able to pay for your college education, cash on the barrel head, no student loans. Enough to make you think. All right, enough talking. Start looking. Okay, so we're searching for someone. Let's see what we get. All right, European Games is off the market, so we're going to have to get cracking. All right, so we've got someone who's at level 2. We've got Dino Wadi. Speed of 200, research of 244, salary 20k per month. And we've also got Fernando Alexander. He has faster speed better research, and only $10,000 a month. Let's look at their, let's see, design of 206, technology 193, design of 104, technology of 195. I think Dino is a little more balanced. So we're going to hire Dino. Okay, Dino, welcome aboard. 
new research available on medium games. All right. Now, before we really get into the thick of it, we need to train Dino with some welcome training. And meanwhile, I'm going to do some research, perhaps, on something else. Okay, I'm going to research simple cutscenes. Cutscenes are a really good way to help flesh out a story in a game. We started seeing cutscenes in, I'm going to say, about the 16-bit era, when you started seeing uh, brief cutscenes in games for the Sega Genesis and Super Nintendo, so... That's worth researching. And maybe afterward, better dialogue. And I know we're not jumping into the thick of things, but we're trying to up our game hit here. No pun intended. All right, and I'm also going to research... Oh, hey, 3D graphics. I've got the research points for that. That's worth getting into. All right, let's see. Let's give Let's give Dino some extra training here. Okay, here we go. Speaking of the 16-bit era, today Nintendo announced the much anticipated successor to the popular TES console. This is the greatest console we have ever built. It comes with state-of-the-art 16-bit graphics and sound. It is simply super, and that's why we called it the Super TES. Fans around the world have been waiting for this moment, and it seems they will not be disappointed. And this is true. Back in the early 90s, there was quite the uh, console war between Sega and Nintendo. Now, in fact, I'm trying to remember in the game, did the equivalent of the Sega Genesis already come out in this game? Let me look at something here. I'm not going to develop a new game just yet, but what platforms have we got? Yeah, we do have the Vena Oasis. So we have the Vena Oasis and the Super TES standing in for the Genesis and Super Nintendo. All right, we're not going to develop a game just yet. We've got... All right. I want to research a little more. Let's try going for... Let's try doing medium games. And then we're going to have to jump in and we're going to have to make something here. Publishing contracts. I have followed the progress of tangent systems for a while, and it seems that, you, that with your recent expansion, you have started developing larger games. Larger games deserve to be seen by more people, and this is where a publisher can come in handy. A publisher will market and publish your game around the world. They will also help fund development. In return, they keep most of the profits, but since the game will sell a lot more, it's usually worth it. I can put you in touch with some publishers so you can look at some available contracts. Just let me know. Interesting. Find publishing contract has been unlocked. All right. All right, so let's get going here. We need to develop a game. Okay, the Super TES by Ninvento has been released. All right. Let's look at our topics here. I'm going to develop a new game. Let's pick a topic. We know Mad Science was a bust. Sports, we did European games, but you know it's too soon. We don't want to... We want to mix things up a little bit. Wild West, as an adventure game, was also a major mistake. Let's look at our game history. What sold well? European games, we know. Deadwood, that was Wild West Adventure. That was a mistake. Argon, which was another space shooter. Eh. Mad Science Lab is a casual game. That was horrible. Won't do that again. Texas Games. Tungsten did very well. Florida Games did well. Espionage. Ain't. City Manager. All right. Cyclemania. Tank Simulator. Yeah, what to do? What to do? Well, in the comments 
on the YouTube channel, we had people saying that Wild West would have done great as an action game, so why don't we try that? So let's do develop new game. We're going to call this, let's call it Desperado, riffing on Outlaws by LucasArts. It's going to be a medium game. We're going to make this E for everyone. The topic is going to be West, Wild West. We're going to make this action. Platform, I mean, we're already spending a lot of money. Let's, let's go with the PC because we know it will do well on action. And for game engine, we'll go with Curtis. All right, so over $200,000 we're spending on this. Let's hope it pays off. 2D graphics. I know we developed 3D graphics, but one hint that I read about this game is you don't want to generate new engines too soon. Okay, tutorial. Creating larger games. To create a good game, you have to assign which team of you're responsible for which areas. Pick team members whose skills match the area to get the best result. When you assign team member responsibilities, you will see their workload. Try not to overload them too much. Okay, so... Dino's good on design and technology. Let's see. Let's see. I'm going to work on the engine... Dino, you're going to have the, uh, and of course, as far as focus on, we'll split that. Actually, no, no, let's do that a little different. I'm going to, I'm going to handle this. Okay. That way I'm taking most of the load. That's good enough. All right, let's go. Yeah, the relationship between developers and publishers can be a little fraught if you're not careful. Uh-oh. Boss, it seems that quite a few players use illegal copies of European games. I've managed to identify some of them. We could either sue them to defend our copyright or send them warnings to ask them to stop. What do you want to do? Yeah, the whole illegal copying, that that was a major concern. In fact, I remember there were certain PC games that were written to require information out of a copy of the manual. That was to help to discourage cop uh, people who would just copy the discs. Uh, that was one way of doing copy protection. All right. Well, let's let them off, White. Let's let them off with a warning. All right, so stage two, dialogue not as important, level design and artificial intelligence very important. Oh, I got a drag staff, okay. All right, Dino, you're handling the level design, I'm handling artificial intelligence, and I'm running at 102%. Well, I'm the boss. Oh, Dino, okay. Okay, we got some news here. Oop. And now I've got to allocate. Wow. Okay, world design, not as important. Graphics and sound are important. I'm already running low as it is. Let's, let's put it more on me to handle the graphics. And Dino, you're going to have the sound. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tune, I'm going to tune this down a little bit to keep things a little more manageable. We're already running at over a hundred percent. Oh boy. More on me. Whew. 
Yeah, this is gonna be this is gonna be really something. Yeah, this really this whole medium games thing really adds to the complexity of how we're doing. Okay, we need to finish clearing out the bugs. I want to see if I can get up to 20 on both of those for design and technology. Can we do it? All right, the media is abuzz with the latest news from this year's entertainment conference. And a surprise announcement, Vani, a company known for General Electronics, has in presented a prototype console called the Play System. Interesting. Apparently, Vani has collaborated with Ninvento, creators of the beloved and successful TES and Super TES consoles, to develop what, what is basically a Super TES with a CD drive. And that is true. In the real world, Sony and Nintendo collaborated to make a new gaming console. This would be the fir world's first console using a CD drive. There is one thing, though, about that. I'd have to check which came first, but if memory serves, before this console came out, NEC had a console called the TurboGrafx-16, which had a CD peripheral as an option. And they, I think, had that out before the Sega CD had similar for the Sega Genesis. Then again... I may be splitting hairs because those were add-ons not built into the main console. Okay, let's see what we can do here. Huh. Journalists around the world are baffled as only one day after Vani and Vinvento jointly announced the play system at the entertainment conference, things have turned sour. Ninvento announced today they will cancel the project and instead seek to develop a new console with a different partner. Wow. <laughs> what happened there? Rumor has it that the distribution deal the companies had worked out was unfavorable to Ninvento, handing over much of the control to Vani. Okay. This seems to be the end of the play system. Well, as the old saying goes, well, just you wait. Alright, so we've got no bugs. We're close to 20. Let's see how this goes. I know we both burned ourselves out pretty hard doing this work, but let's see if it pays off. Okay, off we go. In two months, the TES will be taken off the market. Okay, well. The first reviews for our newly released game, Desperado, came in. Uh-oh. Quirky but good. Could have been better. Action games work well on PC. Enjoyable. Okay, well, kind of mixed, but glad it wasn't worse. All right, let me do a game report. Let's see what worked and didn't work. I know we have a lot of money, but uh, we don't want to burn through it all. It is selling decently, though. Okay, so Wild West and action is a good combination. Story quests not as important for this type of game. Okay, well, good to know. All right. TES is no longer supported. All right. I would say this is a good place to stop. So let me save my position here. All right, so not perhaps as stellar as European games, but still standing, and we've learned a few things along the way. So thank you very much for watching, and join me next time for more gaming demonstrations. Eric Pearson, signing off.